was good y'all it is see, it is probably about it's just not hitting six in the morning but it's a little under six but uh so i do a little video with my new road dog now it took uh took some time you know i think it's been probably let's see it's probably been like eight or nine months, maybe 10, since um, Lil Yellow Man died. And I'm still, I'm kind of just now, finally, just taking in the fact that, you know, this male right here is the, is the uh, was the runner up when he died and is the next best thing right now. So, this is who um, who I've begun to start, you know, breeding heavy, and who's the number one stud on the yard. And I finally, you know, really took in that, hey, you know, Lil Yellow Man ain't number one, this is him, you know? And even Lil Yellow Man's son, his Lil Yellow Man's replacement, you know, still up and coming, so he's number one for now. But, you know, I was making, um, well, not, not making, I was looking at another channel when I seen that, uh, I seen, I came up with a vision, man. I said, you know what, I'll do a video on some of the stuff I went through and other people go through when owning or breeding these dogs. So, the title of this video should be uh, what it means to breed pit bulls in 2019. Really our own them as well. And um, it's a lot of obstacles you gotta go through with these dogs. A lot of obstacles, you know, from, you know, people just automatically assuming because you have these dogs, you're doing something illegal. You know, um, they assume you ain't taking care of them. This, that, and the third. People hating on you just because they see you doing your thing. Like, hey, you know, let's let's call and put the animal control on him. You know, and all that type of shit. So I'm a, I'm gonna I'm a go in depth in some of the things I went through and you might go through when you own these dogs. And why it's important to to uh overstand any obstacle that come your way, regardless of what happens. You know, and this, this, these, these principles really apply to anything in life, you know? So, me, myself, you know, um, being a young breeder, you know, coming up off of a more mature and wiser breeder who taught me at a young age, you know, and I took in the game and learned and stuck by some of his principles and and you know done some things out of my own being and how i like to do you know but at the same time you know i owe a lot to who i learned from and so i don't want to mention them but they know who they are but back to the topic so when you own a pit bull just one People automatically think, especially if they look like they might be, if they're not a, 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 a butter ball and they're not, you know, super fat, they think you're starving them. They think you are, are, uh, are fighting them, anything. The dog had one little scratch. A cat could have scratched it when it got loose, anything, you know. They automatically assume. But yet, you know, most of the time it'd be the small dogs that's way more aggressive. And uh, so uh, I was reading a comment. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Slick Rick. He's commenting on another channel, popping up as I make this video. But yeah, so they automatically assume things that's not true, you know. So when you own more than one pit bull, then you know that then is then then they really gonna assume some stuff. If you own like really about four plus three three 
four plus. And I'm not talking about no goddamn seal running around your yard. A damn Navy seal or, or a goddamn manatee running down your damn yard with blue hairs. I'm talking about a fucking pit bull. You know, no disrespect to anybody that own no, but I'm talking about pit bulls. You know? So it's like, when you have these dogs, you have to get used to developing tough skin. You have to be, you know, that's a saying in the pit bull roar. It's called game. This is a historical saying, but it's still present, you know, as far as that spirit, that energy. You know, and we in America, and it's supposed to be a strong American spirit, you know, unwavering courage and, and, and relentlessness to it. And that's what these dogs embody. As far as American people will tell you, these dogs are game, and that's how you have to be. You have to keep coming in life and everything. So you're gonna have people, neighbors, trying to trying to uh, poison your dogs. Neighbors trying to put them people on. instead of just hollering at you. Some of them just put put the people straight on you. But shout out to the good neighbors who actually talk to their owners. You know, me myself breeding red boy Jocko dogs. These dogs are high strung. Some of them tightly bred. So they're a little crazy. Some, you know, as far as like always wanting to work and be active. You know, and some of them not uh, inbred and they still just want to be active. That's just how they are as a bloodline. They like to work. So you have to really train them to quiet down and get them used to that. And even then, after they're used to it, they still do it to an extent, to a low extent. And that's how I have mine. Mine will still bark their ass off. But I have them trained where they just don't bark as much. But um, neighbors, you know, they're going to poison them. They'll, uh, I had to have them to a buddy who, you know, a customer turned buddy. You know, shout out to him. He know who he is. You know, they poison, I want to say a few of his dogs. And uh, they're going to call on you. They're going to... Uh, they gonna do all kind of stuff. What else? What else? They gonna even? I didn't had. I even had lawsuits placed on me about breeding pit bulls in a so-called subdivision that I just moved in. As soon as I got there, you know, they called on me. Me and my friends. They helped me move in. I come back, and I knew it was coming. I come back. One, uh, all my dogs gone. And it was at the time not all of them, but a few of them. I kept one at the last house I was renting. And I was moving to the first house I ever bought, and. Um, and uh, they called on me and took, let me see, like three. And I had another one at another house and another one I moved around before they got there because I knew they was coming because they left a sign. And I knew after they left a mark, I said, they ain't gonna call on me because I left my number on my door. Instead of them calling me, they just went and took my dogs, which they did, you know? They went and took the, all the dogs I had on the yard. And what I did, I went back and got all the dogs off the yard back. You know what I'm saying? I ain't play with, I ain't play around. You know, people don't buy these dogs, spend money for you to come take them and kill them. And that's all they do. They take our dogs, and then they want to kill the dogs. But, but we are, but they try to make it like pit bull breeders and owners are the ones that's doing all this animal cruelty. So, um, but yeah, I went and got all my dogs back, man. And I, I bought the house, you know, thinking I was moving my family into a nice neighborhood. Which, you know, it was a quiet neighborhood. But, you know, it's it's America, again. It's racism. So, young black family, they moved, the, they, 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 they uh, still kept the fight. So then they placed a lawsuit on me, saying I'm breeding pit bulls. Which, I was a breeder, but... I just moved there. I didn't make not one breeding yet. And they won that case because I missed the court, the second court date because I had to work, you know? So I still have to go back and, and, and fight them on that some more. You know, that's the bullshit you have to go through. It is what it is, but you man up and you keep it moving. You don't bow down. You don't stand down. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and but with, before the uh, lawsuit, they had all kind of shit going on, man, with, with harassment. Even Animal Control have it documented. You know, that uh, I, I came out with a gun. They was investigating my house for barking, you know, because neighbors was complaining. I just moved there. Just moved there. 
complaining. And the dogs wasn't even barking that much. And even the animal control documented. And they came, and they came out one time. Oh, they came out one time and uh and at nighttime it was late, and I had my gun, you know. So they they started me, and they seen my gun, and I started them. And after that they left, but they said that they heard somebody behind my house, you know, trying to, you know, they was they, they so dirty they was trying to make the dogs bark by fucking around and that's what my dogs for let me know who fucking around my house they doing their job so they gonna fucking bark that's what you want somebody peeking around your corner around your your uh around coming coming up by your gate fidgeting throwing you know you want your dogs to let you know something you know i forgot exactly how it's written up in the article but it's written up man they was harassing me you know and then another guy who was a neighbor like way up the street straight up told me that the 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 the, the, the name of the, the guy who who uh the street is named after who family founded that street who run the community kind of you're racist you know he straight up told me so i'm dealing with all this you know my first house my first house i had to go through all that you know what i'm saying they made the experience so unpleasant you know all because they used dog as the excuse but it was, you know, it was, it was multiple reasons why. You know, I ain't gonna get into this. This channel's really just about dogs, not about anything else. So, it is what it is, you know? So it's like, you know, I, I overcame that. They won that case. The case said, oh, I only could have one dog on the yard. And what I did, they just, all they did was make me go uh, get bigger. I bought another house. And left that one behind and rented it out. You know? That's what you do. When they get crazy, you get crazier. You do bigger things, you know? Just like I heard a story, you know? Oh, I knew about it. But Tom Gardner, I think something happened with ADBA. They tried to take him out or something like that. What Tom did, he opened his own registry up. And that's how you got to be. You got to take on the spirit of these pit bulls, man. This is a spirit. You can't be week as soon as something happened you go go on pids online or go go uh go on pids online or go uh where else you can go you can go probably that's really the main place actually but every other week somebody i'm getting out i'm getting out getting rid of all their dogs and it's that and the third the next thing you know five months later they want to get back in so then they call them calling you know all this bs some of them it's a scheme to sell dogs they get out and then sell, they get out <laughs> with what they want to get out with then five six months later they're getting out again then they're getting out again and next thing you know they never run out of dogs but uh but yeah so i mean you're gonna deal with that with these dogs man you got people who love the breed you got people who love them and hate them and you got people who hate them people who love and hate, hate them they'll own a pit bull but then call on you when they see your pit bull because look at him look at him he's not butterball fat you know but he's a pit bull a working dog supposed to be in shape that don't mean starve the, the dogs neither don't starve them you know but he's supposed to be in shape supposed to be active supposed to be able to hunt supposed to be ready you know but, um, nah, so that's what you, some of what you're going to go through. Um, you know, if you breeding dogs, man, that kind that first part of the video is kind of about breeding dog. I mean, on, just owning, them. you know, owning more than one, owning the pit bulls, you know, um, now if you breeding dogs, if you, if you breeding dogs for money, and you don't love the dogs at all, you might not want to pick this breed because they don't make the most money. You know, depending on how much, you know, they it makes money, but but uh not like you would hope for for the amount of effort it takes to keep and build a kennel, you know. Because 
you know, today we got dogs that's, that can't do anything, just have a certain look, but yet they sell for minimum two to three K maximum. Shit, really ain't no maximum. And you know what breed I'm talking about. It ain't no maximum to how much they sell for. They can, they sell for anywhere from what? Max 10, 20. I didn't heard, I didn't heard even some what? Yeah, 25, 30K, a pup, you know? But here were our honest dogs built on integrity, built on courage and um, strength and power. All the virtues that you would want in a, in a person, these sell for, like, if they registered, I would say you got some, some people selling them for $500. You know, all the way to about 3K a pup. If and 3K being the top of the line, like you know, which my dogs to me is top of the line, but I just chose to keep the price middle, so my prices would be anywhere from like nine to 15. So, but other kennels and they 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 they, they deserve to charge that much, you know, somebody got to be the top of the food chain. You know, so it's a couple kennels that sell them for, for they, their minimum is my maximum, 1500 And their maximum is double than my maximum, like 3 k And they have some people, you know, they're stragglers. Some people might get away with 5 k That's people who probably never sell the stock and somebody really want them. But other than that, these dogs is not sold for, for that high of a price. But they, here you got idiots always wanting shit for free. They want you to give it to them for free. And, all that you know then to just buy the dogs they sell all that then to just buy the dog they sell and have 100 ownership that's what i believe in owning the dog yourself you know come on, come on. yep so yeah i didn't even introduce him that's leo the ruler oh, i might have said his name again but yeah it's um yeah so the pit bull man they, they, we, they under price again our dogs though don't have a lot of the flaws they don't need all that assistance with breeding and all that help with litters and needs you know our dogs don't have all those issues because they they are correct they're they're uh they they have sound structure you know they don't have all those issues like those other breeds where when you finally get a puppy you got to sell it so high you know these these dogs will outlast some of these new designer breeds and if you know what a designer breed is it's a dog that's designed by some damn idiot without really a sound uh method to create the breed and you know it's just a breed they, they designed you know i've i've personally witnessed a bully breeder mix a damn english bulldog with his bully to to uh to create his puppies to try to make them exotic you know that's the only reason why they're exotic if i mix this damn pit bull with a uh african wild dog shit mine be exotic too mine will go harder than yours so you know and that not now okay y'all got the name so if you if you <laughs> If you got to the 18 minute mark, okay, you got the name. I mentioned it. But yeah, these dogs, man, they they un they they don't price they're not as high as far as price. And of course they've been out longer. That plays a key. There's more of them. And um I mean it's a lot of backyard dogs, but it's not a lot of not as many of, of certain bloodlines, but they can be found. But you know, they're out there more, you know, so that makes the prices lower but nevertheless these dogs is gonna last this gonna stand the t uh, test of time but, you know so another thing you're gonna have to worry about being a breeder is just a high a heavy influx of bullshitters you know um people they gonna call with not a, a, a not a hundred dollars in their pocket 
no intentions on buying a dog, but asking you all these questions, working you over the phone, they're not accounting for your time. And um, they're not, not gonna account for your time, and, but yet they'll never buy a dog. And sometimes it's so it's cool to keep your phone ringing, but some a lot of times it's not, you know. But at the same time, those some of those guys do become customers. You know, I remember a long time ago I used to call Wakamal up <laughs> and talk to the dude for a long time. <laughs> Never bought a dog, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when I got older, you know, like I said, I was I was uh, mentored at a younger age. But uh, and so I, I knew things that other people didn't know. Some some stuff I probably was was shown wasn't even taught to you know way older men. But um yeah, I would call Wakamal and just ask him stuff. But I turned around and bought three from him, you know, uh, to date. So his talking wasn't for nothing. You know, he came by years later. So I don't trip when it happened. I just try to stay humble. Shout out to Wakamal Kendall. Uh, he's uh he stays humble. He stays pretty humble. You know, he, he he's never over aggressive or over. Uh, and when I say walk, I mean uh, uh, Wakamal Kendall's with Red Boy Jocko. But yeah, he's never over um over uh shit. I'm losing my train of thought. Overly aggressive or arrogant, you know. When it comes to buying a dog from my dealing with them, you know, so I try to stay on the humble side because I can respect that, you know, from the outside looking in, not being in the inside looking out. You gotta respect the humble, humble guys. A lot of these guys, they get some dogs, they sell them for high prices, and then you, then they don't want to talk to you at all. So sometimes I take time and talk, talk things out with people, you know, and spend a little time with them. You know, when people buy a dog from me, I. I'll post their dogs up on, you know, might post them here on YouTube, Instagram, anywhere. You know, and then whenever they go to sell a dog, they say, yeah, that dog on that video, on that Instagram page, that's mine, you know. And that's cool. I don't mind helping people. You know, we help each other. But back to what I was saying, you know, these dogs are underpriced. And then you have, uh, you have arrogant breeders, so... You want to stay humble when you breed, and um, and you just gotta be ready for what comes with it. Y'all, excuse me. I know I lose my train of thought sometimes. I got a lot of stuff on my mind right now, so occasionally I get off topic or I'll miss a point. But yeah, so. You gonna get oh that's what I'm saying okay I caught it now yeah so you gonna you gonna get people that call you and bullshit but you know sometimes it pays off later they or sometimes they, they they might not never get a dog but they'll tell somebody else to uh, buy a dog from you because you built rapport with them and so now they're referring people to you without you knowing it you know and then I didn't have people I didn't have people stop. I didn't have people throw throw um, dirt on my name, you know, and stop somebody from getting a dog. And then the litter turned out to be nice, and, and people that have them are, you know, super impressed. And these dogs are tightly bred boomer thug dogs, the, or the breeding I'm talking about, purebred, you know. And the dude threw salt and stopped the guy from buying the dog. And you never know what he could have made out of that dog off of that I feel like this, if you're not going, if you're not going, um, going to recommend somebody or, you know, say some good about their kennel, just don't say nothing. Just say you don't know. But motherfucker threw some salt, motherfucker, I was trying to look out for. And that's always how it goes. It's always, and that's, that's, that leads to another, another topic out of this, or another, uh, another point to this topic. Do not befriend um do not you know give some of the people that call you uh personal information you know don't uh don't have them on your yard don't tell them you'll form out a dog to them none of that because for one you, you form out a dog to one then they're gonna 
they gonna spread that around that you're giving out dogs. So people gonna call you thinking they that you're giving it away. You know, and then two, they then instead of them keeping what you and them talk about confidential, they gonna go out and tell the next dog, man. So don't 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 be a friend of these guys, man. These dudes are snakes. You don't know who's who's who. So just treat them all like they the same. A snake. You know, you never know who's who. I didn't heard stories from uh A Z. He, you know, he was telling me a story about a guy did him in. Gave the dude dogs for free. Multiple dogs. Multiple dogs for free. And and and, and the dude could do what he want with him. And he, the dude lied and told him that he don't have the dogs no more. He had to come to the guy's house unannounced. And he was just so happened wasn't there. And asked for his mom. I mean, I mean, speaking to his mom. And mom said, yeah, the dog's back there. He went back. All the dogs is back there. And this dude, I mean, shout out to AZ. This dude, this is a generous guy, man. Generous guy. You know. And, uh, and, he, and the dude fucked over, man. So you don't know who's who. So, man, even with me, whenever whenever I sell dogs, I make sure people get what they, uh, get the gender they want. I try to, you know, accommodate people as much as I can. Some people are kind of, kind of uh, hard to deal with. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and difficult people, so. It's hard to accommodate them, but like on the most, on the, on the, uh, for the most part, I like to accommodate people and make people, uh, make people happy by giving them their paperwork, giving them a healthy puppy, uh, making sure that, uh, everything goes like they, like it's planned. And then I do the two year guarantee and I give a shout out to where shout outs to do. I got it from Pitt Island Kennels. You know, if about two years, you don't sell a dog. I mean, you don't like the dog. You can bring it back and get and trade it for a puppy. And so that's what I do. You know, you can't, you can't uh, knock where it come from. That's where I got the idea from, and that works. And I'm gonna be putting out ideas that people are gonna copy off of me. You know, so because I, I got ideas that I haven't put out yet because you know it's not the right time. Everything is about timing. So, so yeah, you're going to have people who you think are your friends, but they're not. They're your enemies, you know, and they don't understand. Sometimes when you sell a dog, man, I didn't have times where I sold a dog. And, man, that helped me. Um, I filled up the... How y'all doing? Good morning. Y'all didn't have times where I uh, didn't help people. And, uh, I mean, not help people. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't got like a... Not a deposit, I think it was a payment. This was years ago when I was still renting houses. I rented, well, my first house, and that was the last house I rented. And I uh, filled up the, the, the refrigerator with food because of these dogs. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if I really was like, you know, how I could have been growing up and turning out, you know, a lot of these dudes would have would have been hurt, man. Hurt because you playing with people money when you, for one, even speak on somebody's name in a ne negative manner, like, you know, and really, really, really throw shade. Sometimes you might can say a little something, but to just sit there and just really throw shade like that for no reason. Motherfucker that tried to help you. I done had a guy I looked out for. G -g put him on to a job. Gave him a dog. Motherfucker turned on me, round spreading rumors on me, talking shit. And basically just an old hater. You know, a lot of these haters, they be older guys. So if you're a younger dude coming into the game, breeding dogs, this, that, and the third, and this really applied to, some of this stuff apply to other breeds too. Or mainly, uh, well, I might say bullies. Because, you know, it's still some of the same type of people in those dogs. But, um, but yeah, some of these older guys, they be hating. You know, but shout out to the people who not a haters. I don't want to just speak on the dark side not the light i'm gonna do a video on the light and the, the, the positive side of owning and having a breed as well you know but uh some of these dudes they they they, they hate you know we're in a new day and age things are different now so 
And I know I'm kind of, I'm probably gasping for air a lot in this video, camera all over the place. And um, I'm missing probably, probably not finishing everything I'm saying. But I'm trying to speak to y'all the best I can right now. I know I'm not the best speaker, but I'm trying to relay a, a message to y'all, some of the stuff that I encountered or heard or this, that, and the third. So, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so beware from the friends. The, 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 well, I guess you would say wolf and sheep clothing. And, um, Stick to you. Another thing I see breeders do with these dogs is they have a price. So let's say they sell the dog for eight hundred dollars. Obviously, that's what you thought the dog was worth. Stick to that eight hundred dollars. Stop posting it up eight hundred dollars, get no responses. Post it up again seven hundred dollars, no response. Post it up again five hundred, no, no no responses. Man, wait. Put it up there and wait. You know. Keep the same price, post a higher quality video, a higher quality picture. You know, inform people what's the value. Put some, some stuff up top in the description. Say, hey, these dogs go back to this, this, that, and third. We know your pedigree shit, everything pushed back. We know everything way back there. Just wait. They are gonna buy it. Just give them a chance. You know, say, you know, and if you have to, tell them you'll do a payment plan. Pay half and pay the rest over months and then they get their paperwork. You know, but don't push your price down. Do not push your price down. I'd rather you say you accept, you'll also accept uh, uh, whatever's worth the price of your dog. So let's say two game systems or, or, you know, silver coins, gold, whatever, slap meal, whatever. You know, but don't bring your price down. Make sure your values stay the same. Obviously, obviously that's what you think is worth. And these people out here got it, man. Don't believe them. Don't believe them. These same people are on your game, dog, and, and three four, $4,500 bullies. And then they want to play with you for, for $600 or $800, whatever you're asking. Stop playing. Stop letting these people play you. Man, I had I had a guy. I had a guy, man. <laughs> I ain't trying to disrespect the dude because we still friends. But at the same time, this is a learning experience. That's how I got this dog you're looking at in this phone. I had a guy buy a dog from me. And then, you know, I was selling them probably for what? I think I sold him that dog for like 700. That's when my prices were still low. I was just kind of, you know, putting them out there. I didn't know exactly what I had based on, I didn't know what I was gonna produce. So I put them for seven, which was low under, I was undervalued, way undervalued. So he bought it and then my time, uh, I had a he had bought the female another litter came up and um and he wanted he wanted a male and i told him i think i said it was 900 i said 900 and that was high for me back then and um and uh he didn't want to pay it and this dude was like close to me in a neighboring state where he when you know he drove to get the female he could have drove to get the male so so what happened is he went to Pitt Island, spent 2K for the dog, 500 for the um, 500 for the shipping. So he spent the total $2,500. I was charging 900, and he could have spent like maybe uh, less than 100, which would probably have been like 60, 80 dollars to come drive down here, you know. So for for uh, how much was it? Uh, so he for for the price he paid for this mail right here. He could have bought two of my dogs and had some change in his pocket. And I said 25, it probably was more than that. Cause you know, you gotta pay for the kennel, the, you know, and everything else. So it's probably like 25, 50 or something more closer to 26. But I got this dog for guess how much? The price I was gonna sell him that puppy for 900. I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, um, let that go. And I didn't need this male when I got him. I didn't really, only reason I thought about getting him is because he had that quarter burns in him. I wanted some burns at the time. He had that solid quarter burns, nice quarter. <laughs> if you look at the quarter of this dog, his quarter is nice. <laughs> you know, which I ain't saying the 75% is, but you know, I had that already, I had thug, got tight thug dogs, you know? So just so happened that became a blessing. When little yellow man died, Leo the ruler stepped up. 
Now I got dogs off of Leo. Now I got sons off of Little Yellow Man. That's that's uh, aging, but now I got Leo who, who who took you know control. So that's another thing. Always have a backup plan, backup studs. You know, some breeders they have 10, 20, 30 studs, but that's on them. Me myself, I feel like really three good studs is straight. Cause you know it's easy to lose one, and then you're down to nothing. And you gotta wait if you're raising the pup. So it's good to have three, three to five studs. You know, me myself. Let me see that one, two, three. I probably have no more than eight studs at the max. But you know, once you have that many, you can't really home in. Well, it's harder to home in on that, on that one dog. You know, where they can produce the maximum amount of offspring. So you have to spread it around. But um. But yeah, not to go off on the tangent. But yeah, so so yeah, I ended up got, getting this dog for the price that that I offered to sell the puppy for. So that name of that game is is uh stop trying to cut corners, thinking shit high that really ain't, and trying to you know just cause you know I'm not the bigger name, you think that that uh the dog is worth less. You know, or this, that, and the third. And the funny thing is, that nine hundred dollar puppy might be better than this twenty five hundred dollar male. So you gotta respect people as well. You know, you gotta and you gotta see things. Look at the whole picture when you buying these dogs, man. The long term effect. You know, so I went ahead and got this male, and it turned out to be a blessing. And now he's holding it down, doing his thing. So, um, what else? What else? What else? What else? You know, uh, try to create some allies, but still, even when they're your allies, you know, and let that ally be somebody of value, somebody who's doing what you're doing, not nobody who's going to discourage you from breeding. I had guys I'm cool with. They know I'm a breeder. They know I do what I do. They want to try to discourage me from doing what I do. And that's how you get cut off. Because now you you putting doubt into my mind. And I'm glad I don't really talk to those people no more. You putting doubt in my mind, slowing me down from what I'm trying to do for, so I can be like you and, and have nothing. So I'm not going to do that. You got to associate with, with people who's doing things that you're doing or don't associate with that many at all then. You know, some of these people there... They don't do nothing but drag you. Tell you, oh man, keep that whole litter. Well, goddamn, I'm not gonna be able. <laughs> can't keep. You know, you want to be able to keep the dogs and keep them in good, decent living conditions and you know things like that. And then every litter, me myself, I don't keep every dog out of every uh, litter. I'll try to keep like two. If it's a special breed, and keep two or three. If I'm lacking on females, like I did a litter with him and Leo, I kept more females than I normally do. So that way I ain't got to buy it later on. And um, what's up? What's up, man? What's up, man? So I don't, um, I don't, I'm, I'm not big on keeping a whole litter unless it's a rare litter, a rare breeding, or uh, something you can't get back. You know, a special, special breeding. You just don't want nobody to have it. Because, you know, people try to challenge you with your own shit. Try to do, you know, they'll try to challenge you. You know, they'll try to undermine. They'll see you doing it. You doing this, doing they'll see what you're doing with your dogs, the prices, the stuff, fees, this, that, and the third, and they'll come back and, and 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 have that exact same dog type of dog, and they'll come back and do it like half, you know. So then you wonder why you ain't getting no calls because <laughs> there's somebody else putting it out for half the price. So yeah, I understand why, you know, and that probably that probably will be something I'll do, you know. I see other kennels do it; they'll have. A stud dog and they'll be the only one with that damn stud dog or maybe one other person to have it you know but it'd be another quality person who's not gonna give the fucking dogs away for free so i'll probably do that a few times i'll take and do a breeding where i'll keep them all that way i'm only one with that stud you don't have to worry about being undermined so that's 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 really the name of the game with some of these dudes you can tell, you know, it's about having stuff that other people don't have. That's going to help you, help you as far as if you're selling dogs, 
I just, you know, some people just like having what nobody has. So they're like, oh, I'm the only one that got this. Like, damn, <laughs> kind of remind me like some of them rappers with those uh, all, all entertain, uh, uh, just celebrities overall got certain cars. They're like, oh, I'm one of five with this car in the world. Uh, no, like Mayweather, I'm the only one with a $7 million watch, a $20 million watch, whatever he got. And that's how it is with these dogs. They, people want to be the only one with certain blood. And, uh, and, and you know, and it's value in that because anything that's rare is valuable. So if you're the only one with something, that is going to propel you in the future to, to have a monopoly on that specific bloodline. Which is why some of these killers can charge higher because they are the only ones. Or, the only, or if they're not the only ones, they're the only ones willing to sell. But yeah, look at this video. We already 40 minutes in. And still got double that to go to get home. So, uh, let's see what else. Thank y'all, whoever's still on the video for watching and rocking with me, commenting, liking, subscribing, sharing, whatever you did or do. I appreciate that, man. You know, mean a lot. I love these dogs. A lot earlier I mentioned, if you don't love these dogs, you won't stick around with it. Man, I probably, I probably, I'm probably barely over positive with some of these, with some of this stuff with these dogs, man. So I make money off the dogs. Don't get it twisted. You should get rewarded for what you love to do. You know, really with anything you do, you breeding or doing in life. So yeah, I'm, I, I deserve a reward. I deserve a payment for what I love. But I've, I've sacrificed just as much, if not more, than the reward. More than likely more. So I deserve the reward. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and that's how it should be, man. You sh I shouldn't have to be... Uh, uh, Scratching up nickels and dimes, you know what I'm saying? As you need, <laughs> just to have these dogs, and I should be rewarded, man. You know, and I and I try to do, I try to put out dogs that uh, I try to put out dogs that I would buy myself. And I don't ask people to do what I wouldn't do. So, for instance. That dude spent 20, 25 on him, but I've spent that much on mine. You know? Well, no, I'm lying. I didn't spend that much on none of my puppy. But um, I spent close. Probably about $500 less. But still, I don't ask that as high as he's asking. So I can't say I'm, I'm not asking you to... to uh, I can't say I'm... I'm asking you to do something I didn't do. At all the prices I'm actually selling my dogs for, I didn't bought them for hire. So, so I can't. Um, I, so I, I, so when I breed and sell, I have good karma on me because I'm not doing something I wouldn't ask you to do. I'm not drug dealing, not selling crack. You know, some people sell crack; they don't never do it, but they selling it. So I'm selling you something that that i've done myself and still do you know i just recently bought two dogs from wakamau and put them to the side but i picked i picked my two out of two separate breedings i got uh and i got them off of two breedings that he don't normally normally uh that he haven't done before and then both of the parents was old so that was st strategic time on my end to go ahead and invest you know the parents old he never done the breedings i ain't saying just wait till they old you know i haven't fully studied everything about genetics but you know that genetics are, are strong when they're young and i've personally seen dogs be bred and you breed the exact same two dogs and you do not get the same outcome one the first litter was was i'm talking about was was top of the line and I mean, bad to the bone and the prettiest and all that, everything, the whole nine yards. And I've seen them come out like that the first litter. Then you do the repeat and they come out okay. They're not, they're not overly impressive like the first litter. And it's kind of crazy, but that's just how it is. So 
the dogs got older and then you repeat it. So I mean, for Wakamal, he do some of the breeds he did, he's done. He's he's done. I mean, they were repeated a lot of times. And I kind of I don't really do that. If y'all notice, if anybody that follow the uh, Ready Red Kennels and watch what we do, I don't repeat breeding that many times. You know, which I ain't saying I won't in the future, so don't try to come back uh, five years from now, three years from now, and be like, oh, you said you won't repeat the breed, blah, blah, blah. No, I'll repeat it, but it might only be two, re only one repeat, but I don't know what I'll do in the future. Anything is, could happen, you know? But, but yeah, so, so yeah, I still buy, uh, buy a dog or two. You know, because some of the dogs, these dogs here, they tight, tight on, on thug. And they need, they need a, a, in, a in the line outcross. So it's like a line breeding. They need a, a, a breeding that's, for instance, breed him to a Wakamal bitch. That's going to drop pure, pure uh, Red Boy Jocko or different strands colliding, which creates, you know, outcross effect. Because, you know... Um, just look up, look up the different methods of, to breeding, inbreeding, line breeding, and outcrossing. You know, to me, it's kind of, you really think about it, a tight thug dog to a walk a mile, which is like a big John, big John, little John dog. It, it, it creates like, you put them together, 50, 50 each. It creates like an outcross effect. It's like a, and it's like a line breeding effect. Well, I was gonna say almost like an inbreeding, but it has to be tighter than that. But it, it's, so it's kind of, it's a good thing to do. I've seen guys done it before. I've done that cross already, but all of the pups died out of that litter due to the dad, the mom, I believe she killed all of them. So I went ahead and replaced her and got two more females. I mean, I got an, and then got a male. So, I mean, so yeah, anything that, I, you know, I don't ask people to do what I don't do. I haven't done. I've drove. I've driven personally all over the all over the country buying dogs or selling them. You know, I've hand delivered dogs to people, and I hand picked up my own dogs. And uh, people doing them laps, boy. And uh. And yeah, so that was a part of the grind. So, I mean, if you wanna breed the dogs and all that, you gotta be willing to go the distance. Are you willing to travel? Are you willing to, are you just gonna have what, what everybody got in your neighborhood or state or city or area because you don't, you're not willing to travel, you know? I'm not saying it's not good dogs in your local area, but sometimes you gotta do something different. Yep, so we're going on 50 minutes in this video. So, um, yeah, I decided, you know, I know y'all been seeing, I've been making more videos, playing around with it. I don't know everything about making videos. I'm learning as I go. So I'm, uh, y'all bear with me. I know everything ain't perfect, but hey, y'all getting something. I know some people, myself included, I like to look at dog videos sometimes, you know, give you inspiration. And so right now I got a goal. I got a goal of 1,000 subscribers. So I'm like approaching halfway there. I mean, I think I'm at like 331 right now. So. Yeah. And I know it's, it's a lot more. I probably, let's see. I know I'm missing something. I lose my train of thought sometimes, but I know I'm missing something about about breeding is breeding pit bulls. What else you gotta go through? Now, uh, another thing you have to you be careful about is when you're dealing with people and they, they doing pup deals, they have they have people who, who you know, lie. Fortunately, I thought I was lied to one time, but I wasn't. So I never had, uh, well, I'm, well, when I say people who lie, I mean lie about having a litter. Now I've had an instance where I was lied to about how many. Then I found, then you know I was told the truth. But other than that, there are people who lie about about um 
about if a female had the littering. And you know, they don't care about paperwork and stuff and you was just waiting on pups. So be careful with who you're dealing with when you're doing pup deals. Everybody wanna do a pup deal. Nobody wanna invest into they having a litter. You know, which I've done, I've, inv I've bred with guys. You know, some one of which owe me a breeding to this day. I gotta go do that breeding, which y'all probably will see this summer. It's been some years since I paid the stuff fee. So it's time, really time for me to stop playing, go drive down and get this breeding done. But uh, let's see, what else we're breeding these dogs? I know with, with these dogs, I see some people have like every bloodline there is. But to me, I feel like it's smart to pick, like pick two, no more than like three good bloodlines that you stick to, that you stick to like, uh, 90% of the time you might have you could have one or two that you got just from an outcross or something But other than that majority of your dogs be one Be uh Be of two different bloodlines or maybe three if you really like three I mean myself. I kind of I'm kind of like I'm close to all in on a red boy Jocko You know, I just have slight little outs on a few of them So that's gonna change I'm gonna add uh, more bolier dogs to the yard, you know, due to the purchase of that property, that land, that's more space and a more valuable lifestyle for the dog. So everything that's going on now is gonna change. So some of the stuff that I go that I went through early on, and some I don't go through today, because you know I, there's people who got good dogs from me and my fam, and who who loved them, who who was doing good with them. And so that kind of go out to the universe and then they come back. So people come back and they don't treat me like some uh, some uh, backyard guy who just, you know, breeding dogs. So I kind of got a small rep on putting out some good dogs already. So, and that's going to only improve with time. I know probably this year and time next year, but probably I know in three, three to five years from now, a rep will be even bigger and people will like the dogs more because I'm only going to do better breedings breed better dogs and make those dogs put out better dogs so let's see so yeah so yeah do that with the bloodlines two or three so you can master those lines you know what you breed and you know the you know how they should act how how they should how usually they look you know their characteristics their weak points their strong points you know you want to master your line let's see what else um what else and i say invest in invest in like Learn about the, about caring for your dogs, upkeep, medicine. That's gonna save you. That's gonna save you to save you time. Time. Uh, that's gonna save dogs that that would have died on you if you wasn't ready. You know, I didn't have puppies die on me because I didn't have the medicine on hand. Sometimes I didn't know what medicine. You know, but now I do. And a lot of times, yeah, you take you take them to the vet, and sometimes it's too late anyway. So I mean, you want to learn how to do it yourself. You can give them preventive care so they never even have to deal with that uh, specific problem. Yeah. Yep, so that's the preventive care, you know, and that goes for all your dewormers, your parvo uh, cures. They got different kind of parvo cures. They got stuff that you can put in the yard that kill parvo, stuff that kill it straight up, just put it in your mouth, you know, all kind of stuff. And I've learned some of, some of these things from different people over time. So I'm not saying don't have friends or allies, you know, which I already said you did, you do. But, you know, because they do, some of them will give you good information. But just be careful. You know, don't give away dogs. Don't say, I'll give you this. None of that. 
because you know if you go because you know some of them will go and, and um and spread around false information so um only do maybe do something like that if you're swapping a dog with some with somebody who on your level who doing what you're doing or just somebody who got a strategic line they want to work with you and you know if you open to that do it but don't do it in, in, with too many people you know if at all so what else me myself if you got kids I always do the hand test me I train mine up ever since they born I'm touching putting my hand into their dog food to see if they are gonna try to bite or growl at me if they do that, then they got to get disciplined and trained to not do that. And if they keep doing it, get rid of the dog. Because then they're going to bite your, your damn children. I, none, of, none of my dogs have I ever, ever had the problem of them doing that to me. Now, they will do that with a dog. Another dog come try to take their food and, you know, and turn to a lion. But other than that, I don't, I don't, I didn't ever have that problem with these dogs. Um biting uh biting at me or growling at me when they was eating so yeah so i'm gonna speak on let's see what else breeding these dogs one thing i i've noticed about these dogs though with certain lines there's always the demand is usually higher than the supply you know, you have to wait just most of the time, about six months. You know, if, if you got a good jip, she gonna, she gonna be in the middle. She'll come in heat every six months. You know, you got a bad jip, like down there every nine months, basically once a year. And, and you got a super good jip, she ain't heat every four months. I got one like that right there. Had her for a, probably, shit, I don't know if it was even been a year yet. It's going on a year, she done dropped two years, two litters already. Small it is though, but uh, but yeah, it's always more demand and supply if you have a good line of dogs, because you have to wait six months. Dogs takes it takes sixty three days on average, give or take, to drop a litter. That's two months. That's so that's eight months. By the time they drop, you see another six weeks for the minimum. You probably want to wait. Some people do five weeks, four weeks. I wouldn't do that. Six weeks, six to eight weeks, you would let them go. Me, six weeks. They hit six weeks, they on dog food, they can go. You know, so at six weeks, I'll put them out and um, to their new owners. And and, and then, uh, you know, they'll go from there. So you do, so that's eight months, six, two months for to drop. Another six weeks to, to be ready to go. That, so six, that's a month and a half. So that's nine and a half months to, to get your money for... For that, uh, get your final payment, the last payment for that pup, and had the pups ready to go, and everything. That's nine and a half months. So if you know you got one that come in heat every six months, so, so um, so yeah, so it's a little, it's a wait. It's not gonna be, you know, not gonna be as fast as you want. But another thing, no, when they some some of them when they drop, their heat cycle comes six months after they drop. So some of them be right back in heat, you know, six four and a half months after they drop the uh, the last litter. So that means you can get about if you have a good female, you can get two litters a year. So yeah, we almost at the hour mark, y'all. So this this is what you want to do too with breeding. You want to keep your dogs exercised, whether you're walking them, you got a slap meal, treadmill, whatever. You want to keep them exercised and tired. We're working them a little bit. It's going to keep weight off of you. It's going to keep you burning calories too. So, you always want to exercise your dogs. Give them um, vitamins and supplements. They got stuff to help the sperm count, stuff to help the uh, females. Fertility. 
take advantage of all that. But yep, I'm running out of air, so been going for an hour with talking. I think I'm ready to just enjoy the birds and just keep it moving. So I'm uh I'm gonna let y'all go. That's a few things that I want to say about you know breeding dogs, owning dogs, whatever, and you're dealing with some of these clowns or idiots, you know, who are always BSing. That's about everything. But now I might do a part two. Too, I don't know. I know I probably missed some points, but I don't know if I'm gonna sit and listen to the whole thing <laughs> to get them points. <laughs> Just get what I missed. <laughs> I know y'all can, y'all never heard it, but me, shit, I didn't listen to it. But uh, shout out to everybody who stayed through the whole hour, not those who skipped to the hour. Y'all, man, subscribe, like, and comment on the video. Let me know what you think, what you've encountered when you bred dogs and what you went through dealing with the public. And uh, let me know what you think, man. Good or bad. You know, y'all have a blessed day.